This week on Jambar TV, we'll tell you how YSU students can become certified to distribute Narcan. After that, we'll discuss how the university is encouraging student voter participation. And later, Gwynethon, YSU's dance marathon, raises more than $60,000. All this and more on Jambar TV. Students in the Master of Athletic Training program became certified naloxone distributors after attending the Project Dawn, deaths avoided with naloxone certification. Jambar TV reporter Amanda Jorn looks into how the certification can help in an emergency. Students were trained to be certified to use naloxone nasal spray in an emergency situation and learned about the reversal effects it has during an opioid overdose. They related their education and athletic training back to the Narcan certification. Morgan Bagley hopes her students won't feel helpless in a drug-related emergency. We don't take care of just the, the athletes, but we also take care of anybody in the stands, you know, coaches, parents, and I had read a story um, I think it was 2012 where an athletic trainer had been asked to help, but they couldn't help because they didn't have the appropriate equipment or the, you know, Narcan. So when I read that story, I thought, how can I help? This was the first session the Master of Athletic Training program hosted, and about 20 athletic training students and athletic trainers on campus attended. Derek Bodo is doing his rotations in a doctor's office to earn his master's degree and said he is hoping to serve more than just the athletic population. It also adds to our profession as well, um, gives us a little bit more credibility on what we're able to do as athletic trainers, um, and it kind of ties in with patient care in, in, you know, in itself. The state-funded program was established in memory of a woman who passed away from a drug overdose. In 2015, we did start the naloxone program here, the Project Dawn program, to to decrease or try to decrease the number of overdose deaths within our communities. We have seen um, a decrease since we've started the program and also some other efforts within the communities as well. The Mahoning County Health Board provides free Narcan training to the community through this state-funded program. With Jambar TV, I'm Amanda Jorant. Students and faculty can participate in self-defense clinics at YSU to learn proper form and techniques to use to defend themselves. The goal is to educate students on how to protect themselves in harmful situations and teach tactics on how to deal with an active threat situation. We're just trying to educate some students so they're more eligible when they are on the community or on campus. Luckily, Youngstown State is the safest campus in Ohio, so, uh, but doing more education pieces to help students when they get the, to the, the real world, essentially, to help them out further. More than 275 student veterans attend Youngstown State University. To ease the veterans' transition from military life to college life, students can visit the Carl A. Nunziato Veterans Resource Center. Last week, the center provided warrior awareness training for faculty and staff at YSU. The training seeks to provide its participants with an understanding of the student veteran population. Throughout the training, different topics were discussed, such as basic information about the military, veterans in transition, the GI Bill, mental health, and on-campus resources for veterans. The center plans to conduct training once a month. It's open to all YSU faculty and staff. Club and intramural sports will get some shiny new upgrades thanks to a sponsorship from Mercy Health. The four-year deal was finalized in January, and funds will provide new equipment and jerseys to club sports. Student Recreation also wants to use the sponsorship to spread awareness about club and intramural sports. The money will be used for anything revolving club sports or special events, really, for our department. So we'll use it for specifically jerseys for club sports teams, as well as some marketing signage and banners uh, for uh, Kafaro Field, as well as some other uh, spaces here on campus. YSU students in the LaRusha School of Accounting and Finance gain real-life experience with VITA, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, offers tax tax prep to community members. YSU students are encouraged to take advantage of the weekly tax service on Saturdays. Volunteers also take the course for credit, similar to an internship. They are certified to do tax forms for Ohio and Pennsylvania residents, as well as international students. 
Anyone interested in making can make an appointment by calling 330-540-1947. Appointments run from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. every Saturday. With an upcoming presidential election this November, Youngstown State University is encouraging students to register to vote. Aaron Driscoll, the executive director of Student Activities, says the rate of YSU students voting has increased over the years. We actually participate in a national study and we have some data that we got back that took a look at our 2014 voter participation on campus versus 2018. And there was definitely a really large jump. Uh, the midterm elections aren't usually um, as popular a vote, but I think because of the 2016 presidential election and how much um, media, how much excitement in our country there was around that election. Um, I think it got more young adults really awake to the fact that we need to plug in and we need to be involved in our community. Ohio's primary election will take place March 17th and Pennsylvania's primary election is April 28th. YSU student Emily Henline turns her Sunday Korean lessons and international coffee hour into a career. The integrated language arts major is a Fulbright program semifinalist. If accepted, Henline will complete her master's in Korean studies while living in South Korea. Henline, who studied abroad in 2017, will focus on Korean language identity and linguistic imperialism. When I was in South Korea, I just felt like I was at home. So everywhere I went, it didn't matter who, they would try to help me um, through any situation. And then um, just the friends I met, it just was a great experience and I want to continue my studies there. YSU's campus will undergo several renovations this year. The largest upgrade will be roof replacements on the Stavage Family Bridge and the bridge connecting Kushwa and Mosier Halls. Other repairs and additions will be added to Fedor and Ward Beecher Halls, the Beagley Natatorium, Stambaugh Stadium, and in restrooms around campus. We have some renovations going on at Mog Library. Uh, a lot of the doors and the door hardware are going to be replaced. We have some work going back on over at the pool. We're going to do some lighting and a couple little things in the pool over there. While the renovations will improve many facilities and buildings on campus, they will cost between 27 to 25 to 27 million dollars. Gals That Brunch Youngstown is bringing women together once a month to eat local food and support each other within the community. The organization has 55 chapters nationwide, but the Youngstown chapter is taking it a step further, using the monthly gathering as an opportunity to support local businesses and philanthropies. Homestead Kitchen and Cocktails in Columbiana hosted February's event. Ticket proceeds benefited Trees for a Change in honor of the late nature lover, lover Kyle Bullen. Local vendors, musical performances, and a variety of speakers attended the event. Next month event will take place at March 15th at Nova Coffee Company in Warren. Follow at Gals That Brunch YO on Instagram for ticket information. ISU's dance marathon, known as Gwynethon, raised a record amount of $60,000 for Akron Children's Hospital. The organization more than tripled the donation amount from its fundraising event in 2017. Students were on their feet for a total of eight hours dancing and socializing. Families who have received donations and help are called miracle families, like the Plant family. She did an excellent job after open heart surgery, and today is a regular old eight-year-old. You would never know it that she had open heart surgery, but it's things like this, people like you guys, that make things like that possible. The Student Government Association gives a Spirit Award annually to two people for Outstanding Penguin Pride. Next up, executive producer Alyssa Weston sits down with YSU student Rebecca Banks, who recently had the award renamed after her. So stay with us. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. 
You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Hey kid, you wanna try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV. Today, uh, YSU graduate student Rebecca Banks joins me to discuss how the SGA Spirit Award was renamed after her. Rebecca, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited on this cold February day. Exactly. Um, so you're sitting there in SGA meeting on that Monday night, and you hear that this award is going to be renamed after you. What is your reaction? Wow. So I'm sitting there, and I had an inkling that something was going to happen, but I had no no uh, idea of the scope. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and I'm looking, I'm looking at everybody because I'm a visual person and I'm excited and then I'm finally, it's, I'm, it's getting put together in my mind. I'm like, what? I'm starting to do like the fist pump. I'm trying to control myself because it is like a professional setting, but I was really like, <laughs> wanted to really yell out and like, what? No, are they really doing this? And so it's just, just so wonderful. What a nice surprise. So tell me a little bit about your YSU journey and your decision to go here. Okay, so I actually grew up right behind this beautiful studio in the neighborhood called Smoky Hollow. And uh, I always loved education, so I attended school right out of high school. I came here for a couple classes. Didn't work out. I was working full time and different things. I didn't really know the process. So put it on hold, got married, had my two baby boys. And then as they grew older, I'm like, I want more education. So I came back to school in 2009. And it's been such a lovely journey that I just never wanted to end. <laughs> So this award that was renamed after you is for someone who shows a ton of school spirit and appreciation for YSU. So can you tell me some of the things that you're involved in? Okay, well, of course, Rookery Radio, which is real college radio right here on our beautiful campus. I do a lot with Pete's Pride now that I am a graduate. I got my bachelor's in 2015, so that's an opportunity to do a lot of different things on campus and in the community. I still do a lot of things with the international students. I, I was able to start an organization, Bridges Out of Poverty Student Union, um, where a lot of us graduated, so we're trying to revamp that. Uh, during my undergrad, I was also involved in Student Involvement Club, Nonprofit Leadership Club, Minority Education Association, and a lot of other uh, United Purpose. These were all um, wide variety. I was, trying to touch a little bit of everything. And it didn't happen overnight. It was just kind of a, a nice journey as I learned, as I took, took certain classes, as I networked. But they're all very dear to me and they helped me grow as a woman. And you're also a former YSU homecoming queen. Yes. Um, what year was that? Do you want to tell me a little bit about yes, that experience? Yes, thank you. 2014, one of my groups asked me to run Minority Education Association, actually with um, YSEA. And I said, let me think about it. And I thought about my son. I said, you know, maybe if he was in school, maybe he would have ran for that. He unfortunately passed away at an early age in 2012. So I kind of decided to go with it and dedicate it to him. And it was so fun. And it was just an honor to 
meet new people. The, pe the people that were on the court that I met that year were still friends. We were very diverse. Some of us are all over the country now, but it was a great, fun time that I will always treasure. Why do you think it's so important to be involved in campus? Oh, wow, because YSU brings us the world. And I want people to know college is fun. College is a lot of hard work, but it's also fun. So when you start going to these different functions or events they have for us, lectures, jazz concerts, uh, and then you start learning about you could join this group, you could join this group, and you want to get your feet settled first, though. So I didn't do this immediately. I kind of had to get the rhythm and flow of being a, an international, a, a non-traditional student and, you know, the process of where are the labs, you know, and trying to coordinate all of that. But as I did and I started meeting people and professors would recommend maybe this organization would be good for you to do a little bit further research and et cetera. And it's just been a journey. And then I actually was on student government for three years. So when I was back in that body meeting, it was just so fun because I have all those good memories. So what are your hopes for the future of this award? I hope that, so another fun fact is that I actually won it in 2012 uh, and mis with Mr. Phil Kidd. So part of it is they also give it to somebody sometimes in the community. And uh, I hope that in the future, that when they see that, they know it's a person that loves our city, loves our students, loves our community, loves our dear campus, our college. YSU is awesome. It's number one. Absolutely. And absolutely. I will sing its praises all day long. I try to do as much as I can here now. And it just brings you so much joy. It, it brings you opportunities. One of the things I like to say is you can literally walk down the hallway and you don't know what kind of example or opportunity you might get, whether meeting somebody, learning something. Yeah, so of I course. Hope that, I hope that comes through in the future when those, the awards presented. Well, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Up next, we'll be given a weekly update on arts and entertainment in Youngstown, so stay with us. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm YM Proud. YSU English invites you to explore the more than 100 classes we have to offer. Students have the chance to read the classics and to discover classics in the making, to encounter the many voices in literature, and explore their own voices creatively. Students can develop practical skills for the professional marketplace in technical and business writing classes. They can study linguistics, education, and second language acquisition, and even film and screenwriting. Come see what YSU English has to offer you. Hi, I'm Dominique, and this is Student Activities Minute. This Monday, March 2nd, we are raising awareness for ovarian cancer. Please visit Campus Rec for more information. On Thursday, March 5th, Head up to Christman Dining Hall to create your own healthy snack mix. Finally, the deadline for the Student Organization Awards are March 6th. Visit ysu.edu slash student activities for the official applications. I'm Dominique Sack, and thank you for tuning in this week's Student Activity Minute. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Gabby Owens. Youngstown community members can sit down and listen to local jazz musicians and enjoy a cocktail at Frida's. It's Youngstown's oldest jazz club. It recently reopened a five-month renovation. Previous, previous club owner Alfreda Frida Anderson Martin opened the club in 1980, but closed it for six months in 2016 due to her declining health. After trial and error, with finding new owners, local musician Howard Howell bought the building last year. Frida's is located at 381 West Rayan Avenue. 
It's open Monday through Saturday from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. The club hosts live music three nights a week. One YSU international student studies English with a passion. Rumi Monado uses that passion for language to full travel from one corner of the world to the next. Jambar TV reporter Francis Claus tells us more about this international student's trip around the globe. Minata studied foreign and Japanese cultures at Meiji University and brings Japanese culture to domestic students at YSU. But what some may not know is that she also brings many stories of her travels to 14 countries and counting. When I was in high school, I did my first time job or something like this, so I didn't have enough money to go abroad. But uh, when I entered university, I studied doing part-time job and I could get like money by myself so I just come up with ah oh, now I can go upload by myself. Since then, Minato has planned trips with friends, family, or to explore country solo. So far, she has been to Australia, Canada, India, Taiwan, Malaysia, Cuba, Morocco and more. I ask my friends like do you want to go this country and if I get some friends that I want to who I who want to go there I will go there with her or him but I don't find anyone to go there I just travel by myself. A YSU saxophone quartet is one of 20 groups selected to compete in the upcoming National North American Saxophone Alliance Conference. Jambar reporter Caitlin Kelly has more. The group of students from the Dana School of Music Saxophone Studio estimate that they have about 45 minutes of music prepared and plan to give every member of their Helix Quartet a chance to shine in a song. For me, I think it had to be In Memoriam by Joel Love. It's definitely one of my favorite pieces, and also it features a uh, baritone saxophone solo. So uh, being able to be featured on there at the end, on the second movement is uh, probably what I'm most excited for to play, and it's just a very beautiful piece. Andrew Kovaleski, a graduate student in saxophone performance, feels it is a big honor to be invited to such a selective competition. Well, this is a pretty big deal. I mean, uh, any saxophone quartet in any school from anywhere in the country is able to compete, and I believe there were about 50 or 60 who uh, entered into the competition. And uh, so we're one of the people that were selected. It's about about a 40% acceptance rate, and other schools that were have quartets representing them are schools like Northwestern, uh, University of Michigan, uh, you know, Eastman, schools like this, which are kind of like really big name music schools. The conference is from March 7th to March 9th and will be held at Arizona State University. The group looks forward to representing YSU on the West Coast. Kate Kelly, Jambar TV. Coming up, Dom joins us from outside of the Watts with an update on track and field. Indianapolis, the heart of hoops hysteria. And beginning in March, the home of the Horizon League men's and women's basketball championships. Eight teams look to reach the horizon and punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament at the Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Semifinal action takes place Monday, March 9th, and Horizon League champions are crowned Tuesday, March 10th. Visit horizonleague.com for more information and to score your tickets today. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana and I am why I'm proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. 
By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Hello everyone and welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Brandon Trelecki. We start this one off with the men's and women's YSU swim and dive teams who finished their season last weekend at the 2020 Horizon League Championships. While the women fared better than the two Penguin teams, neither were able to escape last place in the conference. Now the women scored 282 total points, while the men scored 97 points. Oakland University would go on to dominate the competition, scoring the most points at both of the men's and women's events. The men's and women's basketball teams both hosted their final, final home games of the regular season last weekend. The men dominated the best team in the conference in Wright State with a score of 88-70. On Saturday, they fought tough against Northern Kentucky, but fell in the final seconds with a score of 61-59. to Point guard Darius Quisenberry had a career-high 41 points in the first game, and Quiz says a big part of that night goes to the YSU faithful fan base. They made a big difference, just being loud and rowdy and getting the crowd into it. Um, I think they made a huge difference in uh, helping us get that win over Rice State. Now on the women's side, the team would go on to win their first game of the weekend against Detroit Mercy with a score of 72-66. And they looked to win their third straight on Sunday, but fell to Oakland 86-73. Coach Barnes says the team is optimistic after winning two of their last three contests. You know, and we've won two of our last three with a very limited team. And so... You know, we're excited to, to bring a lot of our, you know, Wisconsin kids back home to, to play uh, in their home state. And we, get, we had a lot of energy in practice today, so we're ready to go. Both the men and women will conclude their seasons on the road against Wisconsin and Milwaukee. The Youngstown State women's golf team defended its tournament title at the Roseanne Schwartz Invitational and earned two additional top five finishes during a successful fall portion of the 2019 season. This year, the team is eyeing much improvement among themselves as spring approaches. Spring season can be a little bit tougher transition, having the winter, you know, practicing indoors all winter. Uh, but I, I think they've all done a great job working hard, and you know, I expect some big things from them from them this spring. I think we have a lot of p potential. We all work really hard in here. We've been in here for hours on end each day, and I think we have the ability to become conference champions if we continue to do what we're supposed to. The Penguins will begin their season March 1st through the 3rd at the Kiowa Island Spring Classic at the Island Golf Resort in South Carolina. The men's and women's track and field teams are looking and add another banner to their incredible run. The men with four titles in a row looking for number five. The women with three in a row and looking for their fourth. My partner in crime, Dom Joseph, reports from the Watts for more on the upcoming championship. Thank you, Brandon. It's good to see you guys are nice and warm in the studio. Well, I'm here at the Watson and Trestle training site, where it'll play host to the Horizon League Indoor Championships for track and field. For Youngstown State, they're thinking dynasty this weekend, as the women go for their fourth straight championship and the men go for number five. Head coach Brian Gorby and some of the players all say there is no pressure going into this weekend as long as they do what they know best. Basically on paper, they're the best in the conference. All we need to do is execute and uh, put it together on, uh, on uh, championship uh, Saturday, championship Sunday, and uh, they'll have a great opportunity to bring home a championship. There's no pressure. As long as we do what we have to do, we have everything taken care of. While uh, we're still practicing uh, all the sprints, distance, throws, jumps, we're all practicing getting better. So there's nothing that we can do to mess it up as long as we just do what we have to do. As long as everybody comes in um, motivated, doing what they need to do, then there should be no pressure and we should come out on top. Again, the Horizon League Indoor Championships is this weekend right here at the Watts on campus. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Dom. Thanks for tuning in to Jambar TV. For more information on stories and additional content, check out our website or pick up a copy of the Jambar today. I'm Rachel Gobab. And I'm Brandon Brown. We'll see you next Friday at noon, Penguins.